It's wonderful that you're all here today to show your support. The district cares about the Chicago area waterways and protecting water quality. And today is an example of how working together can help us achieve this mission. The district, with its 127 years of hard work, we were created in 1889 to address the problem of contaminating the source of our drinking water, Lake Michigan, and we continue to do that today. We've been successful in this endeavor and have constructed seven wastewater treatment plants, including the O'Brien plant, and we've dramatically improved our waterways. The next step is disinfecting the treated water. The Board of Commissioners carefully evaluated the prospect within the constraints of our revenue caps as well as budget policies, and in June, of 2011, we adopted a policy to disinfect the water at the O'Brien plant and at the Calumet plant. An internal task force devoted eight months of research and testing to determine the optimal technologies for disinfecting at the most economic cost. Differences in existing infrastructure and hydraulics at the two plants required that a combination of methods be selected. We chose chlorination, dechlorination for our calumet plant and ultraviolet radiation for our O'Brien plant. Disinfection at the calumet plant went online last year and now we are thrilled to begin disinfection here at O'Brien. To help us inaugurate this momentous occasion, we have a very special guest and a champion of ours in Washington, D.C., U.S. Senator Dick Durbin. Senator Durbin has been very supportive and a proponent for disinfection, and we are glad to have him here with us today. Welcome, Senator Durbin. I would like to add, at the Calumet plant, he presented me with some water, so it's my turn to return the favor and present you with some water. Bottoms up. <laughs> Well, this is quite a bit different from where I was yesterday. I am proud to represent Chicago. It is a vibrant, world-class city on the uh, shores of Lake Michigan. We have miles of lakefront, some of the best sports teams in the country, acres of park, even urban forest. But the city's record when it comes to the Chicago River, the river that runs through the heart of downtown, has not been great. Chicago is the only major United States city until now which has failed to disinfect its sewage, meaning that the wastewater regularly discharged into the city's river was only partially treated. Today, we make a major step forward to reverse that trend and protect the valuable resource of the Chicago River. This water disinfection facility Opening today, a $62 million investment will help ensure that water flowing into the Chicago area waterways is clean. We know the unique history of the Chicago River. It's been a critical part of the past and the future of the city of Chicago. In fact, it has become a major engineering feat that is boasted about around the world. It was assumed that the city's rivers reputation was one that people would understand and appreciate one day a year when they dyed the river green. But those of us who know this river is an integral part of our economy and our future know that the water that flows every single day can make a difference. Over the course of the last 28 years, since the state has evaluated water quality standards for the system, a lot has changed. Environmental laws, restoration work, changes to wastewater management have really improved the water quality of the river. The river now supports, now supports, 60 different species of fish. 25 years ago, it was closer to five species. Since 2014, a lot of groups have stepped up. Let me give a shout out to the Friends of the Chicago River who have done an extraordinary job in keeping us mindful of this important resource. We now know that people are focusing on the city's river walk. 
The conversation is about the river and our future. It could never have taken place were it not for the leadership of the Metropolitan Water and Reclamation District that stood up and changed the policy and moved forward on disinfection. I was happy to endorse their efforts. I'm happier still to be here today for this momentous announcement. Thank you for inviting me to be with you. Okay. I'd also like to give a shout out to Jack Darren from the Sierra Club, an important partner in all of our endeavors. Thanks for being here, Jack. Thank you, Senator, and thank you for all your support in Washington. We have another representative of our federal government with us here today, Acting Administrator of the U.S. EPA Region 5, Bob Kaplan. Prior to assuming leadership of the region, Bob was the Deputy Regional Administrator and formerly the Regional Counsel, supervising 125 attorneys responsible for civil and criminal enforcement actions under federal environmental statutes in the six-state region. Welcome, Bob. Thank you, President Sparopoulos. Very good to be here. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, first, Senator Durbin, it's an honor to be here with you today. Uh, you've been a champion for all of the environment of Illinois, uh, and particularly for this river. So thank you very much, Senator Durbin. Um, thanks also uh, to the mayor, uh, and thanks to my Illinois EPA colleague, Marsha Wilhite, for being here today, and the entire board of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. I'm excited to be here for several different reasons. The first is, uh, it is my actual birthday today, and I can think of no better birthday present than 240 million gallons of disinfected effluent every day. <laughs> That's a wonderful present. Second, this is really a turning point in our relationship with this river. Um, I listened to Mayor Emanuel yesterday, yesterday on the south side talk about his plan he's called Building on Burnham and the, really the backbone of that plan is built all around the Chicago River. He refers to the front yard being Lake Michigan. Well, the backyard is this river, and it's getting much cleaner with this step that we're taking here today. It is made possible, his vision, by the vision of many of the people in this room here today. I've also read this wonderful book uh, called The Chicago River, A Natural and Unnatural History. And it details some of the prior recreational uses of this river. I want to share one of those with you today, just to remember where it is that we came from, uh, as opposed to where we are right now. So about 120 years ago, the form of recreation that was popular at the time was standing on bridges uh, and watching the Chicago River burn. Uh, and I want to read just a, a, a snippet from a reminiscence about that time. It was a weird ex exhibition, more memorable for the attitude of the crowds than for anything startling in the play of the bluish flames across the water. Looks better at night, said one experienced fire river watcher who stood next to me on the rail. Somebody asked a policeman, is there water under that fire? And the policeman answered wearily, I wouldn't be so sure. So that used to be the recreation. The, the reminiscence goes on to recount, people were rooting for the fire to, to hit the pier and see what would happen then. So that's how the river used to be enjoyed, and I can go on and on, and I'm sure you're familiar with some of those anecdotes as well. Today, we have burgeoning commerce and, and tourism on the, on the river. If you go downtown, what you're gonna see is, is paddle boards and kayaks and canoes, and pretty soon, people fishing. So that's all an absolutely wonderful thing and a resource for Chicago. It's really, the science has changed, our values have changed, and we are bringing a different perspective to the river. And if you look all around us, that's what's happening right now. One group that deserves a special shout out is the Friends of the Chicago River, which has for a number of years led the concerted efforts to reorient the vision of the river. Also, Illinois EPA did a fantastic job working with MWRA uh, in coming up with the water quality standards that are really the bedrock of what we have here today. I'd also like to uh, give a shout out to my colleague, Susan Hedman, who in her tireless efforts, uh, really made an effort to bring this project to fruition. I'll tell you, as regional counsel, I sat with her in about uh, 2011 uh, as we were discussing her vision and what she wanted to accomplish. 
What she said is, I want disinfection. And I said, I think there's a, a plan perhaps to get it by 2025. And she said, no, I'm talking about this year. I want to raise the water quality standards. So it was really her pressing on it, uh, as well as the efforts of many people in this room that made that happen. Finally, I want to give a, a very special shout out to David St. Pierre, who I also worked with uh, in, the, in those times. He overcame the many people that were saying this was not possible and this was too costly. And he made it possible uh, sooner rather than later. You know, there were, I'll close with this short anecdote. Uh, in 1926, it turns out that there were swimming competitions on the river. There were marathons. And a guy named Johnny Weissmuller used to win those marathons. He was uh, an unemployed, at the time, uh, Lake Michigan lifeguard. I'm told there's another Tarzan movie happening um, in 2016. And in the goal to make it fishable and swimmable, I'm not going to give a Tarzan yell, I guarantee that, <laughs> but it's coming. Those days are around the corner, and we owe a great debt to all the people that made that happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Our next speaker is the mayor of Skokie, George Van Dusen. Mayor Van Dusen has lived in Skokie for more than 35 years. He served as a village trustee beginning in 1984 until he was appointed mayor in January of 99. He is an adjunct faculty member of Oakton Community College te teaching U.S. history and government, and now he has a new chapter to add to his lesson plans. Welcome, Mayor. Thank you so much. It is indeed a pleasure to have the opportunity to be here today, a day of both celebration and a day of appreciation. I'm going to be a little parochial in my remarks because the village has had a unique partnership with the Water Reclamation District. The district has a long history of accomplishment that's been of great benefit to the village of Skokie but all of the surrounding communities. And I'm not so sure the appreciation has always been at the forefront of people's minds. However, we all owe a deep debt to the Water Reclamation District for the deep tunnel project. It has saved millions and millions of dollars, as well as a lot of heartbreak for property owners in the Chicago metropolitan area. It's one of the truly great modern engineering feats. And you are to be appreciated along with Dick Durbin and the federal government, the EPA, for that project. Also, something that is little known, but is deeply appreciated by the three neighboring communities, the North Shore Sculpture Park is the first outdoor sculpture park in the state of Illinois and one of the first in the nation. It could not have happened had it not been that the Water Reclamation District entered into a century-old lease with the village of Skokie to develop the park, starting with Devine Avenue, going through Lincolnwood, proceeding north through Skokie, up to Green Bay Road in the city of Evanston. That kind of partnership has given passive recreation to thousands and thousands of people in this metropolitan area. And now today you can add another great achievement with this disinfection facility. It's a modern accomplishment which will aid in the public health of our entire region. I want to thank you for all of your past cooperation and your assistance. Your partnership is valued by all of us. Thank you very much for the modernization with this disinfectant facility. I look forward to continuing to work with you on other projects. Thank you so much. And last but not least, I'd like to ask our executive director, David St. Pierre, whose incredible leadership has brought this agency into the 21st century.
Is it the 21st century? <laughs> hey, I love seeing all these glasses out there. They serve a purpose because they're protecting you from UV light. Now, it costs a little extra to get the St. Patrick's tent green, but I think it's worth it, don't you? You know, give a hand to the disinfection facility. <laughs> We have a lot of people that were responsible for this project, uh, engineers that were involved. Raise your hands. Give a, give a shout out to the engineers. Uh, there's folks with uh, Walsh construction hats on. They actually built this facility. All the Walsh folks and subcontractors, raise your hands. You know, it looked like for a while we might not get there, right? Uh, we, uh, we overcame a lot of obstacles to get here today. Uh, it was truly a group effort, a community effort, uh, with the mayor of Skokie, uh, with the CTA, uh, with Walsh Construction, with the engineers, with our engineers, in-house engineers, that uh, resident engineers that ran the project. Just a fabulous job with everybody to achieve what was thought impossible to get here today and to have a disinfection facility online. So I just want to congratulate everyone involved. Thank you all for coming out. Congratulations. <laughs>